What's going on, Puzz? This is Jason. And this is Mike. And we're here to wish you guys a very, very Merry Christmas. And uh, we're also here to bring you something, Mike, that uh, I think's, well, no pun intended, but a holiday special. And it is special in the very, you know, 100% meaning of the word special, man. What we have today is very special. Yes, it is. Ho, 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 everybody. Yeah, ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Your <laughs> present. This is a present from the Puds to you guys. Absolutely. And, Mike, I guess we ought to tell them what it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe give a little spoiler here what we got going on, man. Uh, basically, back in the year of our Lord, 1996. Oh, God. God almighty. Almost. That was one of the best years Oh, dude. Honestly, I think for everything. Across the board. Yeah, man. across the board. That was just, that was a solid year. 96, man, was great. I was, what, 22 at this time, I guess? I just no, turned no, no, 20. No, no, 21, 21. Yeah, I'm just, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was 20. Damn, man, I yeah. was 21, so we were babies, brother. Yeah. And I'll tell you, two other people that were babies at this time are two friends of ours, uh, been friends of ours for years, friends of the show as well. And that is uh, Smiley Josh Stewart and the Ultimate Weapon Chris Stowe. And these guys back in 1996, Mike, in my opinion, pretty much planted the seed for what would become professional wrestling talk from that point on. Man. Yes. Um, you know, we didn't have, we had the internet, Mike. Oh, my God, it was so primitive. Brother, man, if you had the internet back in 96, yeah. you were kind of a big deal. Like, yeah. the average everyday person didn't have the internet. I mean, there were there were no... There were, there were really no podcast at that time. No. Um, there were sheets, you know. There were there were you know basic websites. Very. Yeah, basic, I mean, it was yeah. so basic and so slow. And you know those sheets you're talking about, Mike. I mean, they actually would mail them to you like snail mail, like put a yeah. stamp on it, put the shit in an, yeah. in an envelope and yeah. mail it to you. You know, that's how old this this stuff goes or was. Excuse me, but Mike, back in that day, there was one show that yes. was here in the area. And it was here, and it was broadcast out of Dallas, North Carolina, at WSGE 91.7 FM, Gaston College Radio, The Eagle. Yes. And the show that we're talking about, Mike, is a show called Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh. Oh, man. So many memories from that. Brother, I'm telling you, I went back and uh, listened to this episode. Uh, and, and the episode, we, we actually have three that were unearthed by our uh, best friends over at Sweet Feathery Jesus. Yes. Uh, Belasco, oh, I call him E-Man. He's always going to be E-Man. Yes. <laughs> but he found three episodes of Through the Ropes, Mike. And he put them out there, uh, you know, for a couple of us to download and check out. Mike, I was listening to that very first episode. The episode we're actually oh, going to be nice. looking at today. And I was like, this is tremendous. Yeah, it was It was definitely like one of those, uh, I, it was one of those feelings of, of just nostalgia, going back in time and, and just yes. hearing this stuff and remembering kind of where you were, oh, you know, at, at, when you heard this and, and were listening. And oh, it was it was so good. Oh, man, that was the thing. This thing really did send me back in time. And, you know, Mike, not only did it send me back in time, not only did it give me nostalgic, but it just, you know, reminded me of how good, excuse me, no, how great yes. these guys were, yeah. man. I mean, their chemistry, Josh and Chris's chemistry, well, you guys are going to hear this. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything yeah. that we're saying, you're going to hear for yourself today. Yeah. And, man, just their chemistry, the way they interact with each other, their knowledge, brother, they, you know, Mike, they were the gold standard. Yes. They're, they're yeah, what for sure. we and other podcasters out there, regardless if you're doing professional wrestling, whatever subject matter you're doing, you should want to achieve what these guys were achieving yeah. back when they were 20, 21 years yeah. old. Back in the year of our Lord, once again, yes. 1996. So, Mike, before we get into this thing, let's just talk a little bit about 1996. Let's talk a little bit about what was going oh on. Oh, my God. This was a time where wrestling was white hot it was so hot it man. was wwe it was wcw and ECW? sprinkle some ecw in on top of that and everything that was going on there wasn't anything bad i mean everything was so good and so hot yes. and it was so competitive oh man and you know mike this episode actually takes place excuse let me uh i do gotta look at the dates here man if i'm not mistaken 
Okay, the show. This show was actually done on December the thirtieth. Yeah. What we're about oh, to well, there you to. go. In nineteen ninety six. Ninety six. What twenty two years? Twenty two years, almost to the day. Yeah. We're almost to the yeah. day, Mike, uh, of when this episode first uh, first premiered. And you know, Mike, you know, it was white hot back in the day, but the attitude era in WWF hadn't even really started. Not really. Yet. Not, Not really. really. No. And it if, was there. It was. It was. It was starting to surface. Yes, yes. But it, it wasn't quite at what it was or, or what it would be. Exactly, yeah. man. This was still, WCW at this time was white hot. And like I said, yes. we're going to listen to these guys talk about these situations of how WCW was beating the uh, WWE in the ratings, how WWE was boring. Man, in fact, in this episode that, that we're going to listen to and talk about today, you know, you will even hear how WWE almost went out of business. Right. That's how bad WCW yeah. was beating these guys. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you know, it is just an honor for me to be able to present this uh, special to the people out there who probably don't know what Through the Ropes is. Right. And to hear, once again, man, the seeds that were sown. Uh, but, you know, Mike, before we get into it, man, uh, I do have to, one more thing to talk about. We talked about how hot WCW was. We talked about how <laughs> WWF, or WWE now, F at the time, was about to really start hitting their stride. Yes. But, you know, Mike, the local wrestling scene was actually pretty hot back then, too. Yes, it was. Man, it was smoking and, hot. Yeah, indies were, were really starting to really come up, and, and you start seeing a lot of the indie talent come through, and, and that was really big during those that mid 90s late 90s oh man uh, it, some of the people that were coming through there heck yeah man it was just an explosion and you know we talk about chris and josh being such great broadcasters being such great you know professional wrestling talk show hosts but something else these guys were really good at was promotion yes and they promoted their yes. own wrestling shows back in the day yes. in fact mike and it's something we do need to talk about before we get started there was a wrestling show that chris and josh promoted that took place about Three or four days before this broadcast. That was on the 26th. 26th, the day after Christmas, yes. 1996. Yes. Yes, sir. The main event was supposed to be Sabu versus Rob Van Dam. Unfortunately, guys, and we have to bring this up because it will be brought up in this uh, presentation today. Yes. Sabu did not show up. Uh -huh. uh, they replaced Sabu with the Barbarian, WCW's very own right. Barbarian. He came in, those guys tore the house down. Yeah. But don't just take our word for it, because uh, Chris and Josh have a lot to say about this in this presentation today. I actually still have the chair hanging on the wall. Yes, sir. We still have yeah. our memorabilia from that yep. night, man. Great memories. But you know, Mike, uh, we talked a little bit about E-Man and how E-Man is the one who presented these tapes, who's the one that dug these tapes up and presented them to me and to us to be able to put this show together. Yeah. So, you know, Mike, I thought instead of us introducing the show, won't we let E-Man do it? Because E-Man, like I said, once again, our friends from over at Sweet Feathery Jesus, you know, man, we got to put those guys over. And uh, I hit up E-Man, and uh, he sent a little something to get the show kicked off. And uh, I say, without any further ado, let's turn it over to E-Man. And uh, once again, Merry Christmas, Puds. And I hope you all enjoy this as much as I've enjoyed putting it together and me and Mike have enjoyed presenting this to you. Take it away. Hello to everybody in the Pud Cave and all the podcast listeners out there. I'm Belasco from Sweet Feathery Jesus, or as Jason and Mike tend to have called me since, I guess, around the mid-90s now, since they've known me, the E-Man, which goes back to our Gaston College days. And that's the reason I'm talking to you now. Just recently, when I was moving into my house, I ran across a tape with a little label that said TTR. And I thought to myself, no, that can't be what I think it is. And as it turned out, it certainly was. It was a tape that I made way back around 1996 and 97 when myself and Jason and, as you've heard Jason and Mike mention, Christo and Josh and Two Dogs and all those guys, we were all at Gaston College in the radio broadcasting department. And TTR were tapes I had made of Chris and Josh's show, Through the Ropes. Now, Chris and Josh normally, during the week, did the Sports Zone, which was general sports talk. But on Monday, Chris and Josh did Through the Ropes, devoted entirely to professional wrestling. And this was during the days when the WCW and then WWF rivalry was really strong and there were dueling shows on on Monday nights between WWF and WCW and a lot going on 
month after month, week after week, and I just so happened to run across this tape of three shows of Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh. So Jason and Mike have decided to put together a little special, and I'm very happy to have introduced it. Thank you, Jason and Mike. Thank you for the shout-outs of Sweet Feathery Jesus, uh, the podcast I'm on. You guys keep up with the podcast, and we'll all keep listening. Thanks very much. 9226334 is the way you get in touch with Chris and Josh on Through the Ropes, the area's only choice for pro wrestling talk radio. We have to apologize to everyone because we're still having a problem taking in calls at 9226333. All kinds of issues to talk about today having to do with professional wrestling. We want to start off with Starcade, but we also want to mention the card that we did Thursday night, December the 26th, the National Guard Armory in Gastonia. We expected to have Sabu versus Rob Van Dam in a matter of respect, too, but in a sense, we got something better. Sabu against Rob Van Dam. It happened. Everybody knows what happened. Everybody knew how these guys were going to face off with each other. The 300 people who came into that facility and saw Rob Van Dam versus the Barbarian saw something unique. They saw a match that none of the other millions of wrestling fans in America will see this year, and that has to be a real treat. Oh, yeah, of course it's a real treat, basically, because... Uh, you know, when you see ECW against ECW, it's a great match. But you know, people seen the footage uh, from you know the you know the, the Extreme Championship Wrestling television show. But when you see the Barbarian from World Championship Wrestling go against Rob Van Dam, something that hasn't happened before. Both guys were very excited about the chance or the opportunity to get to wrestle each other. And I'll tell you, they had a great, great match. They went at it from the start of the bell, and it seemed like just about all of the um, you know comments and, and actually the feedback that I got back from on the hotline, also, Josh, uh, on some emails, was positive towards the show. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, you saw some outstanding action. And there's a lot of people I talked to in the last few days who were disappointed that they didn't make the trip because, yes, there's footage of Rob Van Dam versus Barbarian. We probably won't be able to get it released, so you're probably not going to get a chance to see it. If you weren't there, you missed in a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to see ECW against WCW, two federations that have no relationship with each other whatsoever, and their wrestlers aren't going to face off what are you going to see this? Maybe two, three times a year on an independent bill if you're lucky enough to make the trip. Let's head to the phones for the first caller. Say hello to Will. Will, welcome to Through the Ropes. Um, I was, I was wondering about Starcade last night. Go right ahead. Uh, Will, let me ask you something. Um, if you'll turn your radio down, please. Okay, turn it down. This the other one. Turn it down. Just turn it off. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yeah, go right ahead. I was wondering about Starcade last night. Um, what was it like? Or, I mean, was it was it that good? So you want an opinion of the whole card in general? Or, or I called the Food Rose Hotline, and you guys said that, uh, Piper, like, put Hogan in a sleeper. Yeah. That's how he won the match. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the finishing move. He, um... Hogan did a job to Piper, which was uh, very good. And yeah, uh, overall the pay per view I thought was pretty good. Uh, you know, I wouldn't give it a a ten rating or anything, but on a scale of one to ten, I would give it at least a seven and a half. Uh, we're really, just with the culmination of that, end, what you, Josh? Well, I would probably rank it around a seven. Also, the disappointment I had, and and Chris and I were both victims to this, and I think a lot of wrestling fans were victims to this also. Roddy Piper and Hulk Hogan. You saw those two, you know, outstanding names. You saw the names that they really have, along with Ric Flair, the three guys that made professional wrestling what it is today. And and you know, I know yourself, you were uh, surprised and a bit disappointed not to see Flair make an appearance whatsoever. But noting that, these two outstanding names, icons in professional wrestling, but they didn't do anything that special. I mean, it was 10 minutes, it was closed fist, it was out of the ring, it was just average wrestling. And, you know, when you watch an undercard where you see Rey Mysterio Jr. do backflips off to the top rope, seeing these two guys in their 40s, not in the shape that they were, can get a little bland after a while, especially if they don't do anything in their script to, you know, to liven up the match a little bit more. Yeah. Um, is, it, is that it, Will? 
Well, I was going to wonder, could you tell me those, uh, well, do you know those ten other people that are going to be in the Royal Rumble? Ten other people that's yeah, going to be in the Royal Rumble? Live, live Wire, they, they, could, they only gave 20 out, 20 names. Um, I'm, I, we actually have the whole list. I don't have it in front of me of, of you know, everyone that's in it, but, you know, we'll, we'll try to get it. Okay. Okay, I mean, if, if, if we don't get it on this show, I'll, I'll put it on the hotline. All right, thanks. Okay, thanks, man. Bye. You have a good one. You too, bye. Phone line is 922-6334. That's how you get in touch with us. And while we're talking about the Royal Rumble, Terry Funk making his appearance at the Royal Rumble. And just another higher gun trying to make that buy a little more attractive because they're still trying to get a ton of buys to Matt Starcade. Plus, they're trying to put 71,000 people into the facility. That's true, yeah. I mean, Terry Funk, he's he, he's been in wrestling forever, and he's going to, uh, you know, go and, and take the payday. But... One thing I, you know, I, I did, you know, you, you mentioned the backflips and different thing with the Hogan and Piper situation, uh, but you know they they've never done anything like that though. Uh, mm-hmm. You know that's that, you know that that's what I was saying. They've never done the backflips or you know the different things. I mean, I just think that the fans and us, you know, ma- mainly me and you, expected a little more uh, than than we should have from Hogan and Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper hasn't wrestled regularly in several years and Hulk Hogan really hasn't wrestled a uh, regular in several years either so when they come together I mean I didn't think it was going to be anything flip you know flipping off the ropes or or doing anything else I, I just expected them to wrestle a little better but I I never expected them to do any backflips or anything oh I didn't expect them to do any backflips I think my point a little more was towards the fact that in the last year or two in professional wrestling we've gotten used to the moon salts. We've gotten used to the shooting star presses. We've gotten used to the triple A pro Azteca kind of moves. For these older guys, in a lot of ways, that's contributing to the fact that their time is passing a little bit is in the fact that people want to see that upscale style a little bit more. And that attributes to these guys looking a little bit old. Sometimes, yeah. I mean, but that, that's debatable. You know, we can we can talk about that. But let's head back to the uh, phone lines now. Say hello to Stephen. Yeah. What's going on? Not a lot, man. I was wondering what's happening with the NWO's pay-per-view. I heard something last night. Sold out is going to be, is it January 25th is the date, Chris? Yeah, it's the 25th. January the 25th, uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa? Mm-hmm. Okay, and basically, uh, you know, a card that hasn't been released yet, it very well could be, although not confirmed, could be Hogan versus Giant for the title. Uh, may not be, uh, there's not a lot released at this point, because same thing with Nitro, same thing with the pay-per-views. Uh, you're not going to find out much about the lineup right now. We just found out about the Clash of the Champions lineup uh, a couple of nights ago, so it'll probably be a week before or so before there's more information as far as matches being signed. Yeah. I was wondering how y'all thought it's going to bring down the NWO. Itself. <laughs> itself for the preservation of them because if they continue to dominate they get boring they get boring they stop selling t-shirts and remember half of the motivation of the nwo is merchandising if you don't believe us check out the packet they send to people through the mail and i uh, chris you are an example of that you got one and it's loaded with stuff starting at 15 dollars a pop right that was it all right buddy. Uh, okay Stephen. thank you very much Move along to the next caller, uh, Tracy. Welcome. How are you doing today? Pretty good. Good to hear from you. What's going on? Uh, I got a question. Go ahead. Do you believe, like I believe, that uh, Piper defeating uh, Hogan will signal the beginning of the end for the New World Order? Not the beginning of the end. I And, Chris, I want you to expound on this. I call this the beginning of competition. This is the beginning where the best of the NWO will lose from time to time. But remember, there's still going to be NWO pay-per-views for a good portion of 1997. This is not the downfall. This is just to where they start losing some so that the angle doesn't get stale. Yeah. So you, you, you think what you're saying is this will be a, a resurgence of WCW stars? Without the total downfall of the NWO, yes. Okay, so basically what you're saying is this NWO is just going to be like a rival league. Somewhat, but I, I, you know, I still think it'll get worse for WCW before it gets better. 
Okay. You know, they'll come in, and, and actually a couple of more guys from WCW will switch over to the NWO basically to become jobbers. Uh, for the NWO, you know, guys who can take a fall because that's the only time you're going to see Hulk Hogan take a fall. And, you know, that that's just, um, you know, a fact of life. Yeah. He, he jobbed for Piper last night, and that was just something that happens every lifetime, <laughs> you know, for him to job on, on, you know, on a national pay-per-view like that. Let's put it this way. It practically took two years of negotiations for uh, Hogan to allow Flair to pin him on Nitro. I mean, it took that long for Hogan to relax that no-lose clause in his contract to where Flair could actually get a pin. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, you ask us. Well, I think it's going to be an end to, like you said, the dominance of the NWO. I mean, personally, I'm sick and tired of all the old WWF has-beens coming to the NWO. Good point. I mean... They've got some of the new, some well, some of the WCW stars, but fine. But I'm sick of all the WWF has been coming in. I mean, I've, I've just had it. If they can't hack it, get out of wrestling. Well, the thing <laughs> is, you, you, they have a situation, Chris, where even if they're not able to hack it, it doesn't matter. You cannot be able to hack it and still go to WCW and make three hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, and look at Flair. Hey. Whoa, Eddie's. Now, hey, I like Flair. Flair can hack it, my brother. But he's been there. Look how long Rick Flair's been in it. Hey, Chris, this is your fight. Go right in. Well, I mean, it's not a fight, seriously. I mean, yeah, Flair's been in it, but the thing is, Flair can still wrestle. If if it would have been Flair up against Roddy Piper last night, he wouldn't have walked away wondering what might have been. Yeah. Because Ric Flair can wrestle. Hulk Hogan never could wrestle. True. Ric Flair made his name by busting his butt up and down the road wrestling. Hulk Hogan was selling milkshakes. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean that's, that's the difference. But it really done my heart good to see Piper stand up to Hogan. Oh, me too. I mean, you know, I just looked at the guys, you know, we were all watching the pay-per-view, and it was great, you know, just to see Hogan go down. And, you know, Piper Piper did a good job, and but now you won't see him for a while. Every got, time Hogan takes a pin, it makes professional wrestling better. I've got one other question. Go ahead, man. I didn't get to see the pay-per-view. I heard y'all saying that Piper won. Uh, did anything on the pay-per-view happen with Sting? Yes, as far as Sting is concerned. He came in in the giant Luger match. Basically, he dropped the bat in the middle of the ring. Uh, he went over to Luger, whispered something to him, went over to the giant, whispered something to him. Uh, once again, to, to create suspense, the am I NWO, am I WCW angle is taken to the 14th degree. And then Lex Luger was able to get to the bat. He was able to take out the giant, and he recorded the pin that way. And Sting was supposed to say something at Starcade and he didn't. He came in, he made his cameo, and he left like he's done 14 times on Nitro. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, there, there was a big angle at the end that Hall and Nash didn't come in and help the Giant, uh, you know, because, you know, he, he went down and he got pinned because Hall and Nash wasn't there, and basically Hogan blamed his pin on the Giant. So it, it's kind of some inner turmoil going with the NWO. That, like I said, you know, they'll probably patch it up, and then they'll, uh, you know, it, it'll probably break down again and it's sold out. Yeah. Um, what about the Outsiders? Did they win? Yeah, they won. Okay, I figured that. They I figured had, at least one NWO group had to win. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, Bischoff's not going to let that happen. No, 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 no. Well, man, we appreciate the call. All right, I appreciate you taking my call. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Nine two two six three 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 nine two two six three three four. Uh, if if you call in and you excuse me, if you're trying to call in, you can't get through. Once again, we apologize. Please be patient. We're trying to get as many people in, and we appreciate everybody's input today. The great matches, though, on the undercard, and this kind of reminded me a little bit of the Fall ba Brawl pay per view, because the Fall Brawl had some great matches with some Mexican wrestlers or many who wrestled the Mexican style, and this was no exception because you went into the first matches, and I thought the cruiserweight match, first match of the evening, was better than most main events on a lot of pay-per-views. Dean Malenko against the Ultimate Dragon. Outstanding match. 
Jushin Thunder Liger, Rey Mysterio Jr. Outstanding wrestling match. And I mean, the thing is, they had such a good undercard, it was hard to make the main event matches, uh, you know, build up to the same level. I mean, it's it's tough when you start out that strong. It is tough. You know, you know, Usually you take a couple of matches just to set the tone, but I thought Ultimo Dragon and Demon Linko was a great match, too. Let's go right back to the phones. Say hello to Seth. Uh, how's it going, guys? What's okay, going man. on, man? Uh, I'd like to know how y'all feel about uh, the, or what is your favorite organization between, say, ECW, WWF, and WCW? You get it first, Chris. Well, I like them all. Uh, you know, really, I guess right now, my favorite wrestling organization is WCW. Uh, my favorite uh, organization that I love to go see a fight is ECW. The WWF is something I watch because I do the show here. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, that's just, I'm, I'm being honest there. I, I watched the WWF to see Stone Cold Steve Austin wrestle. Uh, and and be, because, you know, I just think the angles are, are terrible right now in the WWF. And I'm so tired of hearing Bret Hart's the greatest wrestler to ever walk the face of the earth. And, and I don't think he is. I mean, that's my take. The problem that I have with WWF, and I wrote about this in a column on the Internet Newsletter, and I'll probably talk about it a little more in a couple of minutes, but... There's a major amount of hypocrisy with what the WWF claims that the WCW does compared to what they do. And I'm talking about the age of the wrestlers. Once again on Livewire, this weekend, you had Sonny take a question for, on that show about WCW, and she answered the question with, don't you have to be like over 40 years old to wrestle for them? Well, I get sick of that. And the reason I get sick of that is they bring in Terry Funk for the Royal Rumble. Jake the Snake Roberts, Bret Hart, you know, not exactly spring chickens. So, I mean, they're always making the argument that uh, WCW has the old washed-up talent when in actuality, you know, they're bringing a lot of it back. I mean, who did you see doing commentary this weekend? The Honky Tonk Man? And they're saying that WCW is using washed-up talent? Please. Uh, yeah, personally, I feel that, see, I've been watching ECW now for the last few weeks because we can finally get it up in LinkedIn if you have a dish. Yeah, go, go ahead and, um, and tell us. You left it on the hotline, but you might as well say it now. Uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it, it comes on uh, PASS 148 at 2 o'clock in the morning if you have Prime Star, And it also comes on uh, Channel 142, and I don't know what that one is. Okay. But, right. uh, I've been watching it for a while now, and uh, it's more appealing to me because, you know, you, the, all the use of the chairs and the tables and stuff, and you just don't find that really in the WCW and the WWF. And I, I just I like that a lot more than I do in the uh, other organizations. Well, I mean that that's what ECW is for. It's a different type of product for a different type of wrestling fan. You know, if if you actually like wrestling, you know, you know down to the mat, it's more WCW. You, you, like you said, if you like chair shots, table breaking, uh, you know, blood. ECW is your product, and you know that that's what it's there, and, and I think Heyman's done a great job at putting it out there. Uh, and once again, I'd just like to compliment y'all on a great show that y'all put on Thursday night. I was there. Uh, I liked it, and don't forget the Blue World Order. <laughs> we, will okay. ne we will never forget the Blue World Order. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks. I I'm glad he reminded me of that. I have not ordered my BWO t-shirt yet. I'm seriously going to get one. Let's go to somebody who I'm sure has one. Heath. Heath, the Hello, BWO guys. representative from South Carolina. How are you doing? Pretty good. Two days before New Year, I'm coming on with my own segment. You have through the ropes, and when I call in, it's in the corner with Heath. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, you're sick? <laughs> in the corner with Heath. Okay. I'm fine. Go right ahead. That's fine with Keep us, Heath. All right. Okay. We'll speak up a little bit in the corner. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, like my buddy who called a while ago, great show. We can't wait for the next one. We appreciate it, man. We, we like, like I was t telling him, we worked awful hard for it, and, and, you know, Sabu didn't show, but, you know, that's him. And Chris has already been doing some preliminary contact with some other wrestlers concerning the next mm -hmm. card, and it's, you know, I mean, it's we can't really give any names right now because that's in the very preliminary stages, but it's looking good as far as talent goes already. That's good, and like I, like I told y'all the other night, you need any help, you got four able bodies down here in South Carolina who's willing to help. Well, man, we might take you up on that. And, you know, everybody that helped last show did a wonderful job, you know, down to security. 
uh, down to uh, you know running sound concessions. Everybody did a, a wonderful job, and also we appreciate all the fans coming out. Okay, um, first of all, I want to say hello to a buddy of mine, Robert and Lee. They're at work right now. How you guys doing? Hello, Robert. Hey, Lee. Yeah, she she, she said I had a sexy voice or something. <laughs> oh, God. Hey. Oh, God. Do you have to get on here and flatter yourself every time? <laughs> of course. Oh, well. well. That's what that's what we do, so I guess you'll take the opportunity also. Any wrestling questions today? Oh, man. Um, Last night, this is what I got out of everything. Sting comes in, Luger and Giant and all that. Tonight, they're going to have Sting do his interview because Raw is live and they're going to need the rate. <coughs> I honestly believe that. That's the reason why they scrapped Sting's interview last night. I don't know, you know, if, if that's totally true because they don't need the ratings. Twenty <laughs> seventh, twenty seventh week in a row, and yeah, Raw's live, but what can Raw deliver tonight? That's, that's the that's thing. The you I know, mean, they don't need it to win. They could do Disco Inferno against Brady Boone and win Raw versus Nitro right now. I mean, whether they have, I mean, since Raw is going to be live, whether Sting does an interview at 7.55 may be the difference whether they have a win or whether they have another landslide like next week. It can make the difference in a couple of points. Well, the reason I feel like that is because WCW is probably just wanting to bury WWF really bad. Oh, yeah. And that would be the ultimate right there. With it being, what, two days before a new year, what a way to finish out the year in wrestling. Well, I mean, you, this, you just opened up a new topic there, the year in wrestling. What was it? We'll do that in the second hour. Me and Josh will give our takes uh, on that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's about ratings. And, you know, we were talking about that. You know, ratings have come such a big part of wrestling. It used to be who put on the better product. Now it's who got the best, you know, rate ratings Monday night or the best pay per view buy rates. It's uh, corporate America, I guess. Well, we was talking about ECW not being able to have their pay per view Thursday. I mentioned you guys at HBO or Showtime should try and pick it up. That would be a great. That would be great. It would be. It might not be some money in the pocket of ECW, but at least it gets their product out there for a lot more people to see. But. Well, that would work, and believe me, it would be plenty of money in ECW's pocket. HBO, Showtime, Cinemax, you know, they they would pay them a hefty price to have that. I just wish they would. I mean, ECW is great. Uh, but me and my buddies, we had a great time Thursday. It was, if anyone missed it, you missed a great independent card. I had a great time. Well, Heath, thank you so much. We have to go to break, but as always, we appreciate your input. Second hour, I have a surprise for you. Good. You always have a surprise. See ya. 922. Hung up on him. Sorry. Well, <laughs> he's new. We're, we're going to work dogs out. He'll be just fine. 922-6333 or 922-6334. It's the area's only choice for professional wrestling talk radio. Through the ropes on 91.7. Hey, this is Willie Neck, Bowen Johnson in here with you. And I got the blues. The blues after hours. Tune in from Tuesday to Saturday nights, 9 p.m. till 1 a.m. for the best of the blues. Like B.B. King, John Lee Hooker, Elmo James, Muddy Waters, and many, many more. Tune in for some bottled blues and some smoking tunes. On WSG, the Eagle, 91.7 FM. Let Neck Bone fix you up on the Blues After Hours. Got the Blues After Hours. And it lays me on today. All right, Mike, we're back from the first segment, brother. Well, I don't know about you, but I feel very <laughs> old right now. <laughs> wow, that really takes it back. Wow, man. What about that neck bone ad, bro? Man, huh? that was solid. I ain't heard that one, Well, You know, I guess 22 years now, man, yeah. give or take. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gaston College, brother, we had so many talented people there. And we had so many memories there. Through the Ropes was just one of many shows yeah. that we had. Um, you know, speaking of shows, you know, we got to talk about the Willie Netbone show. Oh, yeah, you know, dude. Man, I mean, very popular. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that was super big. Oh, man, that show was, was huge, man, back when uh, it first came on. Just like Through the Ropes. Through the Ropes was huge. But, you know, man, there was a couple things from that first segment I'd like to touch on, Mike. Yes, absolutely. Well, first and foremost, man, Chris still had a lot of hatred toward Hulk Hogan. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> where you got Hulk Hogan milkshakes at. I, it's got to be. Who, who carried a Hulk Hogan milkshake? Pudsworth, do you know this one, brother? If Pudsworth doesn't know it, then I we can't no find idea. out. Yeah, uh, we'll, That wasn't across the sea? I, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what that milkshake was. That came out later on, though. Well, I, I was thinking maybe he was talking about the ice cream bars. Could maybe. be, could be. But I Of course, think, I don't know. There was some strange stuff that was being marketed I, in between that yeah. time. Yeah. Hogan was trying all kinds of like the yeah. pasta thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so. Yeah. Do you, not, you don't remember that? <laughs> Oh, that oh would be yeah, dude. Stuff? No, no, they don't no. eat pasta in, in the UK, man. No, I don't. I don't think Puzzworth would know about pasta. They call it something Ooh. else over there, <laughs> spotted dick or something. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, they, For sure they eat pasta. It's, it's right up from Italy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but guys, I got to tell you, man. One thing that really stuck out to me. Well, a lot of stuff stuck out. To yeah. Me. Oh yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff stuck out. But one of the main things that really... Well, first of all, Mike, before I get to what really stuck out, um, feedback. <laughs> I'm so glad we don't do phone calls here on the podcast. Not talking about you know positive or negative feedback. We're talking about audio, audio feedback. Audio feedback. <laughs> oh, my God. And, brother, it's across the board. I was almost going to just clip the yeah. parts where it was just feedback and brother but it's I, part of it it's part it, of that history it is absolutely man in fact when i reached out to smiley when i first started doing this project smiley uh, wrote me back so i don't know about that first segment when i was like no we got to talk about that man yeah. we got to talk about the feedback if for no other it reason, was real it was real man you know, why didn't anybody want to turn their damn phone uh, their their damn radio down while they're yeah you know? they're marks they want to hear themselves oh my on, god they want to hear themselves yeah. man. that's it 100 percent, man and you're going to hear it more and more in this broadcast today but the one thing, Mike, like I said, there's several things about this first segment that really stuck out to me. But really, for me, the biggest thing was how Christo predicted the future about the downfall yeah. of the New World Order yeah. of the NWO. When that caller asked, how, who do you predict will bring down the NWO, Christo says, themselves. Right. And brother, Christo was yeah. right. And you know, Mike, um, you know, we could talk so much more about this stuff. But you know, man, I think that we ought to just let... Chris and Josh talk more about it. Yeah. But you know what? Before we hit that next segment, I was just talking a little bit earlier about the different shows that we had on, you know, WSGE. Right. One of those shows was myself along with my partner, or I should say him, and I was the partner, more of the sidekick, which was a guest that we had in the studio not long ago, and that's Chris Reno Baker. Yes. Uh, Chris Baker, uh, like I said, myself and Chris had our own show called The Rock Shop, where we played metal and heavy hard rock music. But Chris Baker was also the producer of Through the Ropes. That's right. Now, this particular episode, Chris Baker was MIA, but he was there from the very inception of Through the Ropes to its very end. So we reached out to Chris to see if he had anything he would like to say uh, in this special. And uh, he sent me something back. So, you know, without any further ado, let's just uh, let's let Chris talk about it, and then, then we'll go into our next segment. So, uh, Reno, take us home, brother. Hey, it's Chris Baker here, producer extraordinaire of Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh. And when it comes to Through the Ropes, uh, only one thing can be said. Three little words. Ooh, what a rush. I tell you what, one of the best times in my life. And I'm proud to say that I was there from the beginning. Of course, Chris and Josh came to me and asked me to be the producer and a hockey analyst for their sports talk show, uh, Sports Zone with Chris and Josh. And we had a little wrestling segment that happened, what, like every week or so. And, of course, it became so popular that Chris and Josh decided, hey, you know what, let's turn the whole show into, uh, into a wrestling show. And they, they asked me my thoughts, and I was glad to be a part of that process. But uh, we, we did it, uh, made the jump, and I tell you what, it was just uh, one of the best times. Of course, we love sports, but wrestling was our passion, is our passion, I think, in a lot of ways still. But uh, you know what, we had uh, such a great time doing this show, and uh, great listeners. I tell you what, uh, we had some really uh, hardcore fans of the show and as the producer i got to talk to all of them as they called in with their questions and uh, putting them on the air and uh, just uh you know a, a wonderful following that uh you know you just uh, you can't create that that just happens spontaneously that just happens through 
chemistry and i think uh, you know chris and josh had that chemistry on the air i like to think that i added my little part uh, what what uh, i was involved with it and it just was a, a an awesome time and an awesome show i i really think that this show uh it's, it's a shame it ended as soon as it did and so soon because i think under the right uh, circumstances under the right platform this show could have uh, gone on to do uh, even greater things than than we did uh, broadcasting out of dallas north carolina but uh, you know what? Uh, such is such is life. And I tell you what, I loved working with Chris and Josh. I was not just the uh, producer; I was also the ringmaster. Sometimes, sometimes a referee. When Chris and Josh didn't agree on things, I had to to play referee. And sometimes, when uh, neither one of them was right, and I was the one that right, I had to lay the smack down on their candy asses. Uh, didn't have to do that often, but every once in a while, you know. So I want to thank Chris and Josh for for letting me be a part of uh, of the sports zone and of course becoming uh, through the ropes with Chris and Josh because it was truly one of the best times of my life from the from the on air show we did to the wrestling shows we did to the wrestling shows we went to and of course I uh, just uh, had a great time with them Chris and Josh and the rest of our running crew uh Jason and Mike from uh, the podcast uh, E-Man, Dogs, the, the whole cast of characters, just some of the best people I've known. And, you know, to the years and miles between us, uh, they're all brothers to me, especially Chris and Josh. And and uh, being a part of that show uh, really solidified that. And now I'm working in radio. I've been working in radio for the past, you know, 25 some odd years. And it took me a little while to, to find who I am. But I, I really think uh, who I became as a, a disc jockey, as an interviewer, as a, a radio personality, I think a lot of those roots and a lot of what I became as a broadcaster was really, uh, you know, forged in those years of, uh, of hanging and banging with Chris and Josh and our running crew. And of course, uh, being a part of, uh, of the sports zone and through the ropes with Chris and Josh. So uh, for, for that, uh, you know, they'll always be a part of my broadcasting career. And uh, thank you so much, Chris and Josh, for, for letting me be a part of uh, through the ropes. Through the ropes with Chris and Josh, 91.7 FM, 922-6333, 922-6334. The only professional wrestling talk show in the area that's through the ropes with Chris and Josh. We're going to get to Extreme Championship Wrestling. Uh, some of the results. We're also going to talk about the situation concerning their pay per view. Uh, but, you know, we told you we'd give you the ratings. WCW Monday Nitro last week got a 2.9, uh, and Raw got a 1.5. Actually, and, and what was sick and had to be terrible if you're Vince McMahon. WWF Superstars, the Sunday morning syndicated show, actually beat Raw, which is like their bread and butter. That's terrible. I'll tell you, that bread and butter is like just bread and water. There's not anything. I mean, it, and the thing, you watched it last week, and what would you tell me? You tell me you told me that would be the best cure for an insomniac on the planet. There was just, there was no light. I mean, I saw parts of it also. I was concentrating on Nitro last week. But you said it put you to sleep, and if it put you to sleep as big of a wrestling fan as you are, what's it going to do to average Joe wrestling fan? I don't know. I mean, it's it, it's terrible because, um, I mean, the thing is when it's that when it's taped like that, and you know you you know what's going to happen, it's one thing. But you know, it, it, I knew the outcomes, but the you know the matches were terrible. They were absolutely terrible, and you know there was no. Uh, you know, interesting angles last on, on last week's show, and this week they better pull something out of the hat. I mean, they're live, and you know, let, let, let's see, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bret Hart mix it up some. Let's see, you know, something mankind going up against Stone Cold Steve Austin again, heel versus heel. Vince McMahon needs to pull something out of his butt to where you know they, they can get some ratings up because the one point one point five. You know, you hear all this about um, NBC trying to buy the USA Network and turn it into Lifetime. Yeah. Well, you know, what? if they keep dropping ratings and dropping ratings, you know, Raw's going to be showing on public access before too long. It's going to make it a much more easy decision. Now, you talk about what are they going to do? What are they going to pull out of their butt? That's what they have Shotgun Saturday night for. But we had the first three matches for Shotgun Saturday night. Do we have anything brown-breaking? <laughs> Do we have anything that's going to shock the world? 
Well, I mean, <laughs> okay, well, I mean, just l- go ahead, Chris. Just give them the example of what powerful competition they're putting together for what is supposed to be WWF Extreme. The Grim Twins, Ryan and Don Harris, take on the Godwins. Oh, yeah! Goldust takes on Salvatore Sincere. In a loser wears stockings match. <laughs> the Sultan, 5-2, takes on the newcomer, Rocky Maya Villa. This is January the 4th, Shotgun Saturday night from the Mirage uh, you know, nightclub in New York City. And they're also going to have a live feed from the WWF house show that night in Stockton, California. And also, a guy brought this up in the hotline. I wanted to uh, you know, get your take on this and also the other fans um, on, the, on the phone. For this particular show, Vince McMahon is paying for two live feeds. Mm-hmm. The live feed in the Stockton, California, and the live feed in the Mirage Hotel or the, the Mira- Mirage Nightclub. Right. Why can't he pay for one live feed every single Monday night? Therefore, I mean, it's it's almost like he's basically given up the Monday night spot. He's just giving it up. I mean, why don't he uh, have? Well, why don't he bring that bring back primetime wrestling then? And forget about Raw then, because if, if he's not going to do anything to compete, then why not give it up total and say, hey, we'll put Gorilla Monsoon and Jim Ross and they can look at old WWF tapes. I think he's waiting for people to get tired of WCW Monday Nitro. If he's just sitting there and waiting for it to happen without trying to do anything himself to contribute to that, then he's wasting his time. I don't think he wants to throw in the white flag. I think what he's doing is saying, let's retreat for this battle. We know that Nitro has won for 27 consecutive weeks, and they'll probably win for 25 more consecutive weeks. Let me right now concentrate on opening up this one market that they don't have, see if I can win this, see if this can help towards a resurgence in the popularity of my organization, and then maybe in uh, maybe a counter effect of that will be Raw becoming more popular. But it doesn't matter whether you have it at eight o'clock on Monday night or whether you have it on Saturday night at the China Club or the Mirage or you know thirteen thirteen or any of those clubs that they have in New York City. It's about talent. It's about nothing new. The Grim Twins against the Godwins. Can I say your classic superstars match? And, you know, Stockton, California, they want a live feed for what? I mean, Aldo Montoya and Savio Vega against Bob Holly and Barry Horowitz? I mean, <laughs> uh, what do they have to offer? What well, do they have to offer? All they'll do is probably the main event with that one will probably be Stone Cold Steve Austin against Bret Hart or Shawn Michaels against Sid. And, and, you know, they'll probably show that match, which is a house show. Nothing will change. A shotgun Saturday night needs to be new and needs to be innovative. And I've heard the, the announcing team will be Vince McMahon and Todd Pettengill. We didn't get a phone call. <laughs> We didn't get a phone call, what, for Shotgun Saturday night? Yeah, I mean... They'd have to pay me big time to go up there in that mess. Well, I'm just saying, I mean, Vince and Pettengill... Why didn't they bring Lance Wright, Mr. Hype Central? Uh, and, you know, since he's ring announcing now, why will not it be Lance Wright and Todd Pettengill? Heck, bump up Joel Gertner. He'd do a much better job. I mean... Oh, Joel's great. You could come up with, you could come up with a ton of names. And, I mean, think about this once again. You still are confused with what they are trying to create. An extreme wrestling show with superstars wrestlers and your most uh, basic announcers. I mean, if I wanted to go... uh, I would say for Shotgun Saturday Night, I'm surprised not to see Doc Hendricks hosting, who would do a much better job. Um, What? I mean, even Jake... You think Michael Hayes is a good announcer? Compa- mm-hmm. I, I'm compa- in comparison to Pettengill. Oh, oh. I mean, in comparison to Pettengill. <laughs> hey, everybody, let me tell you about our new merchandise. <laughs> this brand new Shawn Michaels t-shirt. <laughs> Only twenty two fifty, and the glasses come with them. So. <laughs> okay, turn his mic off. 
<laughs> right, that button right there. Yeah, that button. Uh, while we're, uh, you know, a little <laughs> light right now, I'd like to thank you, say thank you to Two Dogs and JJ for subbing in for uh, Baker. I don't know where Baker is. He's up and down the highway somewhere well, uh, between here and Fayetteville. So he he should be here. We'll kill him. But thank you to Two Dogs and JJ for subbing in for him. Remember when we said we were going to send him on a mission east to take somebody out? He might have taken that literally. So we might be getting a phone call from a bail bondsman before long. Possibly so. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> no, don't cut his mic off. <laughs> he keeps trying to turn your mic off. But uh, give us a call. It'll be 922-6333, 922-6334. I think both lines are uh, going to work. So uh, you know, in, in, in the next hour, uh, we're going to get into you know all these different uh, subjects. We'll also talk about the year-end wrestling. We'll talk about the EC, ECW pay-per-view uh, and, and ECW in general with the uh, you know, uh, excuse me, the results, and we also have the Clash of Champions, which will be on TBS the January the 21st. You know, we're going to get into this in the second hour, but we sat there and we asked our we asked ourselves a question during the break: What was wrestling in 1996? The answer you came up with, and the answer that I would come up with also was M O N E Y, money, and. But even more than money is just, and you also said it in the last, in you know, in the last part was corporate, and how corporations have taken control of what's going to happen. You know, our cable systems on Wednesday will no longer show WWOR from New York. One of the main reasons that's not going to happen is because Ted Turner does not want to use his parent company, Time Warner in order to provide the feed for the WWF's attempt to try to counteract what WCW has done for the past year. And I mean, we talk so much about how ratings and television and pay-per-view buys are making as much of a difference as who's wrestling for who, what titles are changing hands, and what angles are going on. That's a perfect example. You know, what your cable system runs in a lot of cases has to do with professional wrestling programming. Mike, brother. <laughs> you know, man, we're kind of talking as these uh, recordings are playing out just how on point Chris and Josh both were. But, man, that last point Josh just made before we came back about how the corporations were so important in professional wrestling at the time in the 90s, man, it still blows my mind it was like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know? <laughs> I mean, and, and it's a trip, Mike, because I even see WWE today. One of their problems, in my opinion, is how corporate they've become. Yeah. Um, I know with, you know, of course, you know, now it, it's a lot different from what it was then. But now, you know, it's a publicly traded yes, company. Yes, sir. And, you know, of course, we're, we're still in that PG era. Right. You know, and it's it's all about, you know, the sales. Yeah, exactly, man. It's all about keeping those Hit, shareholders happy. Hitting hitting that worldwide market. That's it, man. Hitting that salty money. Yeah, a big billion. That's all that's I'm a, going to say. That's, a, <laughs> that's another show. But it just is such a trip to me, Mike, going back over 22 years to see where those seeds were planted. I mean, and it really was planted. WCW was corporate. Yeah. You know, WWF, even though we're still private at the time, you know, but they would eventually go on to become public as well yeah. and a corporation within themselves. But Let you, me ask you, why is Michael Hayes getting so much hate on this episode? Brother, I'm going to tell you what, man. <laughs> I, Chris Stowe was hating Doc on Doc Hendricks, people, Michael Hayes. I, I love Michael Hayes back in that what? day, man. Anybody who names himself after the band Dokken, Yes. I'm cool with that. Because yeah. I didn't know that until like later on in life yeah. that the doc was actually docking. I'm like, well, shit, you should have told me that back in the day. Yeah. I'd have been as big as yeah. well, I mean, you know, It would have made more sense. <laughs> yeah. I just thought he was like a doctor. But uh, nah, man, uh, Chris, I'll tell you one thing about Chris, though, back in this day, just like today, he doesn't cut corners, man. He no. doesn't candy coat it. No. But he tells you what he feels. Um, and it's just a trip to me, man, because... We talk about how long ago this was, but at the same time, on the flip side of that coin, Mike, it also just shows how young we were. Yeah. You know, yeah. how young these guys were. I know. And uh, I can hear it in their voices, and I can hear yeah. it in some things they said, their youth and their 
just how gung ho they were about this thing. Like we all were. Oh yeah, we were all yeah. like that. You know, just passionate. Extremely passionate, Mike. You know, I think that's the word that through the ropes really, you know, can be defined as. Yeah. Was passionate, man. Because both these guys had, but they were also so knowledgeable. Like I say, man, I, I can kiss their ass for, 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 yeah. for oh, a yeah. week yeah. solid and, and not get tired and, and yeah. still forget stuff. But, you know, Mike, one of the one of the funnier moments uh, in, in that last segment was where they were talking about Chris Baker, the man that we just heard from. <laughs> You know, uh, being being MIA on this particular day. All right. And they actually had some weight subbing for him, uh, yeah. which we've heard. We've already heard a few little uh, hints of who that was. But that was our friends down at Long Walk Studios. Uh, this is a works very own Two Dogs, David Hayes. Yes, sir. David Hayes, Two Dogs, was right there in the beginning with us just like you were, just like I was, just like Chris Baker was. Yes. And uh, so these guys, you know, they were needing some help. Baker just took off and left them in this day. <laughs> <laughs> so they looked around. And rock and roll, baby. And, yeah, rock and roll. Rock and roll highway, baby. Baby, you know, he was up and down the roads. Uh, Christo threatening to kill the man. Yeah. So I wouldn't come back either. Huh. So what they did <laughs> is they brought in uh, David Hayes, two dogs, to uh, do the production and production work for that day. And uh, dogs actually sent a little something here to the podcast to say what he feels about this is uh, not this is work. Excuse me, about through the roads. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he puts over this is a work too now. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> It's all getting mixed together over the years. It, it can, brother. It can. It can kind of get your eyes crossed. But uh, we're going to keep on rolling here, and we're going to let uh, the one and only, the immortal two dogs, David Hayes, tell us a little something about it, and then we'll go on into the next segment. Well, hello there, Pudsters. This is David Two Dogs Hayes coming to you from Rock Thrill, South Carolina. Um, ordinarily, when you listen to me, you're listening to me inside the uh, studios of Long Walk Productions. Uh, but not today. You are listening to me uh, recording my voice on a very cheap phone, so I have no idea how the sound quality is going to be. Uh, and it's probably terrible. And quite frankly, this is like the 17th or 18th time that I've tried to do this, and I just don't care anymore. So... Mike and Jason asked me to uh, record uh, some of my thoughts on uh, on the old uh, Gaston College radio show, Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh. And uh, I'm, I'm all too happy to do that just because I think that the, that particular show was what planted the seed for... The podcast with Jason and Mike, and also my uh, podcast, uh, This Is a Work. And so I, I really, uh, I, I think we kind of owe them a, a debt of thanks for, for planting that seed in our head. And we brought to fruition a million years later, uh, one of the, uh, the, the there, there's, I've got a million memories about uh, hanging out with this crew and uh, putting up with Josh. And uh, I, I could tell you some really amazing stories. But uh, quite frankly, Finger told me uh, he was going to put a stopwatch on me, so I got to keep this moving. So I, I, I guess what I'll do is uh, I'll tell you about one particular story that uh, just involves me and Christo. Uh, he had asked me to come over one evening because there was an episode of Raw that uh, they were running a particularly interesting angle, and uh, uh, he needed to talk about it with somebody. Uh, and quite frankly, he was really sick of Josh. So uh, he, I, I, I was the next best thing, I suppose. Now, it couldn't have been Jason because... Jason doesn't really leave Lincolnton. If you leave Lincolnton in Jason Finger's eyes, you will eventually fall off the edge of the world and monsters will eat you. So it had to be me. So I go over there and we have a couple of beers and we're watching Raw. As, as I recall, it wasn't a very interesting episode until the end. When Jim Ross gets in the ring 
and he starts shooting on Vince McMahon. And he's talking about how Vince fired him when he was sick and all of this, that, and the third. Well, we set our beers down, and we started inching up closer and closer to the television. And as he's shooting, he's getting angry. And he's talking right into, into the moving camera. And we're at one point, we had crawled on our hands and knees and are about six inches away from the television. And that's when he brought out Razor Ramon. Now, there's a couple problems with this. Um, the first problem is uh, Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall, was working for WCW at the time. And the second problem with that is that it wasn't Scott Hall or Razor Ramon. It was some jobber that I think we, 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 we I can't, I think his, he, he had wrestled under a name of Big Titan or something like that. Uh, the, you know, I, I probably should have Googled this, but, you know, I'm calling this in the ring. And I remember we got so pissed off that it was not actually Scott Hall coming back. We could have thrown our beers through that television. Uh, even though it's, logistically we understand, no, he's under contract with WCW. He couldn't possibly come over. But you have to understand, this was the Attitude Era. And anything could and did happen back then. It was just that scenario uh, back then. And we didn't have the internet, not really, uh, to keep us in the loop to give a loop to give us spoilers or anything like that. But I remember us being so angry that night and we turned it, we, we basically, we just, after we saw him, we just turned it off and then we just bitched about it for another 30 minutes. I think I left, uh, uh around like, uh, uh, 11, 30, 12 o'clock that night, went out to a bar, started drinking <laughs> And then got back up for school uh, for Tuesday and then came in with one bloodshot eye. But uh, it was a really good time. Uh, I, I really think the world of all these guys. And Josh is okay, too. Uh, but, uh, Jason and Mike, thank you for allowing me to do this uh, for Through the Ropes. Uh, you can also... Catch my podcast, This Is A Work, and you can find me on Instagram at Two Dogs This Is A Work Podcast. You can catch me on Twitter at David Hayes 357 and you can find me on Facebook if you feel like you need to. Uh, but uh, thanks a lot, Puds. See ya. Boombastic. <laughs> Boom terrible. Get this off this show. <laughs> Dogs. I, wait a minute, I can do this. Mr. Boombastic. Oh. Damn, nobody want to hear that. <laughs> Who is that? Right, said Fred? <laughs> shaggy. That's Shaggy. <laughs> I thought you would enjoy that. Shaggy. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Baker is not in the studio. <laughs> in his place... For some reason, we've enlisted the services of the immortal two dogs and Zigzag Man from the Animal House, meaning that our musical choices could swing into all kinds of possibilities in the next 50 minutes. And you can uh, check them out here on 91.7 on Sunday nights from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Um, they play a little bit of everything except country. Leave the country out. Uh, it's gothic, industrial, uh, rave music, uh, in, is it not rave music? God, no! <laughs> you said rave before. That was a long time ago. Oh, it was a long time ago. Gothic and Industrial, that, that's you. So you, you can get it all. Animal House, 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. Sunday morning. Let's go back to the phones. Who's on here? Will. Okay, how you doing, What's going Will? on? Um, I have a, a, a question about um, the Ultimate Warrior and Rick Rude. Do you know if them two are coming back? 
<laughs> well, uh, you know, just about every week somebody asks about the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, really, it's it's just up in the air with him. He ha- he was seen a couple of weeks ago at a Nitro with WCW, uh, and you know his his Warrior University's going out of business, so he could pop up anywhere. He could go back and wrestling some independents in Las Vegas. Or he, you know, who knows? He could come to WCW and Rick Rude. Uh, Rick Rude is, you know, uh, choosing not to wrestle right now. He had a real bad uh, injury that cost him his well his career for a while, and then he was going to come back at Survivor Series, but elected not to. Uh, I don't really think this is that good of a time for. Uh, you know, wrestlers of that nature to come back right now because you've got a guy like Rowdy Roddy Piper. I mean, wrestling as far is kind of saturated at the moment, so maybe better for some of these guys to lay low for a while. Do uh, you guys have a prediction for who you think will win the Rumble? Um, uh, the Royal Rumble, probably Shawn Michaels. He's not in No, it. no, not Shawn Michaels. Excuse me, Bret Hart. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. And then he'll win at WrestleMania 13. Yeah. It, the, Michael's and Bret Hart are going to wrestle again, right? Of course. That was in Bret Hart's contract. That's going to suck. <laughs> yeah, it is. I don't want to see him wrestle again. Well, I'll tell you, you're going to have to get used to it. Because not only are you going to see them wrestle again, after that's over, they're going to wrestle again. <laughs> yes, hey, true. <laughs> let, let, let me give you an example. Remember last year? Now... We, we ought to do a trip Next time the WCW send us some T-shirts, we're going to do a contest. And the question we're going to ask is, we want you to name the number of times that Maniac Mark Marrow wrestled Hunter Hearst Helmsley in 1996. And if you can come up with that answer, we'll give you three T-shirts. And if you can come up with, really, you know, in, in the... In the ballpark. <laughs> we'll give you one. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's just repetition is the word of the year for the World Wrestling Federation. Uh, basically because they don't have the talent roster that WCW does. That's why, and, and here's another one. If you can tell me how many times stunning, stunning Stone Cold Steve Austin and Savio Vega wrestled. Uh, you know, it, it's just one after the other. And it, it's really getting old, and that's why you'll see Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels wrestle a couple of times in 1997. Um, I have one more. You know about Kurt Henning? What do you, th- you think he'll go by Mr. Perfect or Kurt Henning or a new name in WCW? Uh, he he can't go by Mr. Perfect. That that's copywritten uh, with the uh, World Wrestling Federation. He'll probably go by Kurt Henning. Okay. Or maybe just by. You know, I'm the great or something, Josh, you know? <laughs> I mean, it, it can be something that they can make up. Uh, you know, when Hall and Nash came, they called us, called him Hall and Nash, and it worked. So I think they're going to try to stay within that. So if they bring in somebody else, they're probably going to keep using the real name. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Thanks for the call. You too. Bye. We're going to talk about 1996. You know, on Wednesday, we're going to be in a new year, and we want to talk about what good happened in 96. What bad happened in 96? I mean, where's a good place to start? Uh, Well, go right ahead. Oh, excuse me. No problem. Uh, I don't want to. What good happened in 1996? Wrestling became more mainstream. That's what good happened. Uh, You know, wrestling is more. God. um, Just said that and the lines light up. Uh, You know, wrestling is more mainstream now. Uh, There was a time that wrestling, uh, you know, a, a week out of this year, that professional wrestling was the third highest rated show on cable television. You couldn't say that two years ago. You definitely couldn't say it about three years ago when wrestling was at its lowest point. And now it's cool again to be a wrestling fan. That's you know that that's why shows like this, hotlines like we uh, you know we have. Uh, newsletters like we have are the hottest thing on the internet because professional wrestling went more mainstream. You see the stars on Regis and Kathy Lee and Pat Bullard and every uh, you know all these talk shows. You see, uh, you know, wrestlers on you know on, on different shows besides wrestling, and 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 I, I think that's what's good came out of uh, wrestling for this year. You know, I'm glad you mentioned Bobby the Brain Heenan because he said that. He said that, I think it was the first or second Nitro, he said that one night, he said, wrestling is cool again. And after he said that, I mean, it was just like it was just like a snowball. It just kept peaking and peaking and peaking, 
and it hasn't stopped yet. It continues to get better, and it made a need for shows like this to have an opportunity to give information because it wasn't enough for people to just buy their monthly wrestling magazine. They had to hear news on a radio show weekly. They needed newsletters four times a week. They needed daily hotlines. That's the type of demand that is created when you have a mainstream audience as opposed to a cold audience. Let's head back to the phones. Who's first? It's our good old friend in the corner with Heath. Hey. What's hey. up? Man, you said you had a... Champions is awesome. It is. Oh, it's, it's terrible. Gonna be, it's it's going to be a good one. I thought that was for tonight's Nitro. I was like, man, they're going to rule the world tonight. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Not no. on Nitro. No, this is a Disco Inferno job night, so I mean... <laughs> well, I could be Disco. Well, Josh, you could. Ah, tough match. Tough match. I don't know if I have the bell bottoms to match, but I'll go What's with my What's our surprise? Look. Okay, here it goes. As a new year approaches, let's not forget about the old. Wrestling was awesome, and the NWO wanted your soul. The nation of domination looks to be strong, but they're in the WWF. It won't last long. Hogan moving very slowly because he is old. Let's go back to 83 and see Flair for the gold. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, God. Hall and Nash, imitators no more. Sonny, gone from Smoky Mountain to first class act. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but whatever you say and whatever you do, let's not forget about the man. The man that says, Ooh. Oh, Man. God. Man, Ooh. he. You got to fax that to me. You, hey. That was greatness. Heath. That was greatness. You Heath. deserve every bit you get. Heath, that. you got to fax that to me now. <laughs> now? I ain't got a fax machine here. <laughs> well, you, you, got a, you, you have access to a fax machine? You got my home number, right? Uh, actually, I don't. You don't. Yo, you guys were supposed to give me a card, and you didn't have any that day? Okay, if, you, if you'll hold on that after we get finished talking, dogs will give it to you. Uh-huh. But I want you to fax that to me. Uh, just go, go ahead and send it and fax it. Well, actually, just, you know... Uh, my my home phone and, you know, and fax line are the same, yeah. so we, we'd love a copy of that, man. That was great. Hey, that it only was... took about 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> hey, you were obviously inspired. When you're inspired, it doesn't take that long. Hey, I get inspired every time I hear anything about wrestling. Me too. We I all do. <laughs> well, he, thank you so much, man. Okay, dude. All right, man, it. hold on, we'll, and uh, dogs will give that to you. Uh, back to the line. Archie. Hey, how's it going, guys? Okay. What's going on? Oh, not much. Uh, just taping your show because I don't get to hear it very often. Really? Well, great. I have to work and don't get off in time, so I have to tape while I can of it and listen to it later. But the uh, reason I was calling, uh, my buddy James said that uh, I had the T-shirt at the uh, thing in Charlotte. Oh, did you? The through the ropes? Yeah, through the ropes. I made it on my lunch hour. Well, great. <laughs> but uh, my buddy James said y'all were talking the, uh, the other week about Y'all were going to have some printed up. Well, we, you know, we're actually thinking about it, yeah. Well, if you do, put my name on the list to get one. Well, well actually... Mine, I had to make it with a magic marker on an old T-shirt, but well, I still got it out in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> I had well, to throw it away. You know, me and Josh are talking about it. We'll, we'll give you one free. <laughs> you know, for, for what you did, we really, really appreciate I that. I wish I could have got it on there more. He came right in front of my face with the camera, and I held it up, but all I could see when I played it back was through. Well, what it is, it's a director for WCW named Craig Leathers, and his yeah. number one responsibility when he's taking shots of ringside is not to give anybody else a plug, and he's very, very good at it. He is. He certainly well, I is. I tried, fellas. Hey. Well, 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 Archie, you know, we well, appreciate like I said, it. I love y'all show. I, I just wish they had had it years ago. Well, we do, too. Uh, you know, And that's one of our main things about doing this show. It's new in this area, and, you know, we, we hope it continues to grow. Yeah. Well, my buddy James and his boy Dusty call about every week. Yeah. I just wish I could, because, like I said, it's usually 5 or 6 o'clock before I get off. Well, you know, like I said, we're on the air two hours, 4 to 6 every Monday. Yeah, well, I don't usually get off to at least five. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and we appreciate it. And always remember, if when we make the T-shirts, we will send you one. But remember, you always had it first through the road T-shirt. That's right. That's right. Okay, Archie, thank you. Yes, sir. You have a good one. Bye-bye. I love that. And real quickly to sum up for anyone, this guy was at front row 
for the Nitro Show at Charlotte, made it through the ropes t-shirt, brought it to ringside, and did his best to get it on television, did get a little bit on there, and we appreciate any plug we can get. Yeah, we do. Uh, and, you know, it's just... It, that, that's really just the great thing about wrestling fans. They usually go that extra mile, uh, you know, to, to try to, uh, you know, promote their favorite thing, their organization, or whatever. Uh, it's, you know, Monday night, wrestling night, that, you know, that, that's that's what it's all about for me. And I know Josh and dogs and all, you know, we, and we, we get home, we watch wrestling. That's what we do. And, and both shows are going to be live tonight. I hope Vince McMahon comes up with a decent show to counteract that horrible show last week and it showed by the 1.5. Okay, Mike, I want to address something that David Hayes, Two Dogs, said. <laughs> Only thing I know, I may have never left Lincoln, but I've also never been eaten by monsters. So, so hey, man, I'm not taking any risk here. <laughs> oh, dude. You know, man, that... I'm that, tell you what. That last segment, Mike, just there was so much going on. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple of things that really, you know, stood out for me was, well, Christo's absolute hatred for rap hip-hop rb type music yes uh that hasn't changed no. uh to my knowledge now I, I don't get the chance to talk to Stowe as much as i would like but i'm pretty sure he's still not a shaggy fan right right <laughs> uh something else man that kind of cracked me up was when uh dog says something about it not being rave or he hasn't said that <laughs> for like a long time now so we were 21 22 at yeah, the time yeah. so that long time was probably like two three weeks yeah about a week yeah, or so a week yeah, or two, yeah. You give or yeah. Take, man. yeah. Um, but you know, man, kind of on a, I guess more of a somber note, you know, there was three wrestlers that were mentioned in that last segment, Mike, that have, uh, you know, unfortunately have passed away, you yeah. know, um, that was the ultimate warrior, uh, ravishing Rick Rude and Mr. Perfect Kurt Hennig. No doubt, man. man. Yeah. It's just such a trip to go back and hear this stuff as it was happening in real time. Yeah. And now all these years later, you know, along with several others, you know, have passed away, man. Um, it's just kind of a sombering thing, you know, and it's something that's a little bittersweet about this broadcast, yeah. you know. It's been really great to come back and hear these memories and hear about this, you know, world of professional wrestling as it was happening. Right. But to hear about these um, unfortunate early passing uh, of talent, man, it, it, it's somber. Right. You know, it really is. Uh, but, you know, Mike, the last thing I want to talk about, well, one of the, one of the last things I want to talk about this segment are the fans. The through oh, the dude. ropes, yeah. Had, bro. Oh, yeah. Now they're all, super loyal, super, super man. Yeah. Only thing I'm gonna say, Mike, is you know, ain't nobody made a podcast T-shirt, and we ain't got no poems set for the podcast. That's all I'm going well, to see, say. Well, see, I was just at, you know, I was just asking, you, did the did, uh, the Throw the Ropes T-shirts ever get made? To my knowledge, they did not. I would love to have one. Oh, brother, if they if they oh, did get made. Back. Well, first of all, man, if they got made and I didn't get one back, the name will be aggravated. That's bullshit. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. be a little aggravated. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go on record saying I hope they didn't get made because I'm right. going to have to bring up some shit from 22 years ago. <laughs> Where's mine at? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, but I, I do remember uh, <laughs> uh, getting one of the, uh, what was it? I think it was a Slam Marie t-shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. they had all yeah. kinds of gimmicks, brother. Yeah. I still have uh, several posters. That's one thing I loved about when they were doing this show. Yeah. We got so many free gimmicks, brother. Yeah. It was Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah, y'all yeah. keep doing it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, one other thing, and you know, Mike, I'd be remiss if we don't discuss this uh, dynamic of that team of Chris and Josh. As knowledgeable as they were, the chemistry and the charisma they had, I think something else is very appealing about those guys to me. And I, maybe it's because, you know, we were all personal friends, but there was a little bit of tension Oh, for sure. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Between those two. Yeah. Um, we got some memories coming up, so I'm not going to put too much out there, but, but we'll touch a little bit more on that tension. But to me, it was it was just enough to make it fun and entertaining, but not enough for it to be explosive. You, you know, In other words, you knew these guys loved each other, man. I don't give a damn what Christo says. Joshua meant it, but Christo would probably go to his grave yeah. <laughs> denying yeah. it. But we know better than that, man. Yeah. We were there. We know better. And uh, it's just something about that that little bit of tension between the two, I think, just set them off yeah. 
and just oh yeah, just added to it. But you know, Mike, don't don't just take my word for it because once again we have a memory coming up. Uh, once again, we got to send it back over to our friend over at Sweet Feathery Jesus, uh, Belasco, also known as E. Dude, I'm just going to call him E Man. E Man. From here on out, bro, I, I want to be respectful uh, to him and his other show and give his other handle. But damn it, man! I it, know it just don't feel right to me. Yeah. E Man, if you're yeah. out, and I know you're listening, E Man. It's not disrespect, brother. It's just the way it is, man. It's just the way it is. But uh, he said, "Oh, a- that was another thing." You know, we were listening to you know the Immortal Two Dogs, right? Which, which brother, his 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 promos are immortal <laughs> for sure. <laughs> we love you. Right. <laughs> Bring us Snickers. Yeah. <laughs> And zigzag. Oh, now, man. I forgot about zigzag. Zigzag, yeah. man, brother. You talk about once again. You know, we were talking about Chris and Josh. Yeah. You know, we talked about myself and Baker. Yeah. Brother, you cannot talk about tag team champions of the world in the world of broadcasting in that era, and not bring up two dogs and zigzag, man, on the Animal House. That's right, brother. That show. Like I think I said it during uh, the episode with Chris Baker when he was down. I was actually on that show. Yeah. In fact, I was Two Dogs' first partner. It, the Animal House with the Werewolf and and Two Dogs. Well, the Werewolf didn't know shit about Gothic industrial music. Right. I knew I liked it. I knew there was or rave it. music or <laughs> God no, <laughs> it's not rave anymore. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> oh man, we're giving Two Dogs will never listen to us again, ah. man. <laughs> but no, man, <laughs> those guys. <laughs> were phenomenal they were entertaining i tell you man we we were all very fortunate to where we all were you know had charisma we all had personalities but certain sets of us just really took it to another level in other words man what i'm saying is when chris and josh got together it was magical when myself and chris baker got together i like to think it was magical at least half of it you know yeah and brother when two dogs and the zigzag man also known as jj when they those two got together it was magic brother and um, it was just it was just a great time, man. Yeah. You know, not only for professional wrestling, but just you know, just to be alive. Yeah. And to be oh, a part for of sure. It, you know, but like I was saying a little earlier, Mike, um, E Man sent in another little memory uh, along with his introduction, which was off the chain. But uh, you know, we had talked a little bit about that tension between uh, Smiley and the Ultimate Weapon. But uh, like I said, let, let's let uh, E Man. You know, he has he has his take on it. So let's hear what E Man's got to All say. All right. Probably my favorite memory of Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh was the time when they were going to break. And I can't even remember the details of what they were debating. But you had Chris on one side of the argument and Josh on the other. And they became so frustrated with one another that they actually started physically wrestling each other on the air. You could hear Baker doing some of the news. And in the background, you could hear the two of them just wrestling away because they were just so frustrated with one another. That was one of my favorite memories. Through the ropes with Chris and Josh, 91.7 FM, WSGE. Back to the phone lines we go. Saying hello to Leslie. Hey, guys. What's up? How are you doing today? Oh, pretty good. Just got off of work. Man, that's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we never have to go, so that's a good thing for us. So, <laughs> uh, I can go ahead and tell you how many times Hunter Hearst Hounsley and Mark Mara wrestled in a year. Way too many. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way too many. Well, the thing is, when you have to start at 30 just to make an estimate, there's a problem. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. But, um, well, I have a couple things to talk about. But uh, one, the first thing is, how can you have a pay-per-view, especially Starcade without Ric Flair? Amen. I don't know. I mean, it, I mean, it started with Ric Flair, and hello, where was he? I don't know. You know, like like we were commenting in the first hour. You know, he could have been sick. He could have missed his flight. I don't think they planned to go in with him not being there. But uh, hopefully, I'll know next week where he was. And if they did, uh, you know, that that's terrible. Right. Exactly. But um, I was just happened to think. Um, you know, you're talking about the, you know, year in review and all that. And, I I mean, it's towards the end of the year, you know, and I still haven't found out what purpose Mongo, Deborah, and Six have in professional wrestling. To annoy us. I, that's what I'm thinking. You know, you know, King kings back in, you know, ages before us had court jesters <laughs> who were there simply to amuse people by doing stupid things. Mm-hmm. And that was their purpose. 
Uh, That's well, exactly. I mean, it, it's comic relief. Uh, well, they're not. I don't think they're very funny, to be honest with you. I just I have to laugh because they're so stupid. But yeah, I mean, Deborah, who cares if she ever won a beauty pageant? Which I'm trying to didn't. see how myself, but you know, but well, you know. <laughs> oh, she's got that. Ad, I mean, she's just got that voice that just—it's like fingernails on a chalkboard, kind of like Missy Hyatt had back in the '80s. Just kind of just right. Ugh. Well, the funny thing was, last night, if you saw Starcade, her voice is so messed up that when she initially got the mic from Gene Oakland, somebody at the mixing board for the audio was having to adjust it so that she wouldn't sound distorted. She sat there, and she sounded funny for like 15 seconds before they finally got the mixer right. I mean, that's how screwed up her voice is when she tries to speak within an arena. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get the pay per view because we were trying out my my best friend got a satellite and we were gonna try that out, but it wound up being it, it was saying please hold and an operator will take your call and we waited for about an hour. The buy rates last night were huge. Yeah, I figured uh, you that. know WCW made money hand over fist last night. Piper versus Hogan, and the thing is. Uh, you know, it, most of them went home happy because you know, uh, you know, Hogan had to do the job. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, like like I was saying, I mean, I looked at Josh and everybody else in that room, just shocked that he went out with the sleeper, mm-hmm. the mighty Hogan, <laughs> the mighty Hulk Hogan went down last night in front of God and everybody. When the arm went down the second time and Randy Anderson raised the hand for the third time. I mean, I just looked at everybody and I said, no way. And then it fell. So I think I was probably as shocked as anybody else, if not more so. You're expecting to, you know, it almost dropped to the floor and then he go into his little freak out. I was was expecting him to go into that NWO pump up that he's been doing. Yeah, the Hulk, you know, he was hulking up. Oh, God. He's always done Did he lose the title? No, uh, no. Non-title match. They're not going to do that. but, But one thing I do have to say, he loses... He gets punked, so to speak, and we still have to end the pay-per-view with this guy posing. Oh, uh. Yes, with the background, as always, the 70s porno music. So. <laughs> okay, my fiancé... Vanessa Del asking- Rio. <laughs> <laughs> well, my fiancé was asking me, where, where is that song from? Because he's, he's, he's wanting a copy of that music. Well, um, you can get a copy of you on the Internet. Mm-hmm. You can get it you know, anywhere on the Internet. I actually don't know uh, where the original version was coming, but, but I, I know a new NWO song is on its way. I, well, that's, I think that's the best part of the NWO is that song. I mean, it was much <laughs> cooler when it was just Hall and Nash coming out to it, and then Hogan started coming out to it and imposing. I, that made me throw up. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> Hogan does that to us, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's always made, you know, ever since he told, I mean, I used to like him. You know, back when it was initially, you know, Hulkamania, blah blah blah. But I mean, I was 11 years old at the time. But uh, when he start, when they asked him point blank on Arsenio Hall, "Do you use steroids?" and he could, you know, I mean, everyone knew he did, but he just stood there and told a lie and said, "No, I didn't." Yeah, and then had to go to court and say it in front of Vince McMahon. Exactly. It, I mean, and. That's something people remember. I mean, that didn't get forgotten easily. And then uh, a lot of his star, a lot of what people thought he was as a human being as opposed to just an entertainer, really faded. And his true persona and what he's out to do became much more apparent. Exactly. And then a couple of months after the Vince McMahon trial, you know, he was in there talking. I think it was on Jonathan Ross Presents on MTV. And he's just in there talking about, you know, all the all the wrestlers use it. Anyone who has muscles uses it. I'm like, well, why didn't you say that to begin with? Yeah, you know, it basically because, you know, he, he's put on the spot. And, you know, everyone knew he did. And yet there's a lot, you know, others, a lot more others in the world of professional wrestling who still do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, he was put on the spot and he was a spokesperson and he lied. Leslie, we appreciate the call. Okay, guys. You have a good one. You too. Bye. Take care of yourself. Okay, bye. Rolling right along as the phone lines continue to fill up on the area's only choice for pro wrestling talk radio through the ropes with Chris and Josh. Clash of the Champions, you know, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And it's funny that we talk about Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're talking about 96. This is an area of the country that, let's say, the early to mid-80s, was more uh, AWA territory. With the downfall of the AWA, that's created an opportunity 
for WCW to go into other areas of the country. A few years ago, you never would have Clash of the Champions this far up north. And, oh, yeah. you know, that's something different. I, You know, about the only area of the country where WCW continued, uh, continuously prospered in the 80s that far north was Chicago, and that was mostly because one of their starcades was Chi-Town Heat. Right. Chi-Town Heat really helped, uh, you know, World Championship Wrestling and, and the NWA uh, with, uh, you know, the, the Northern Battle. So let's head back to the phone lines once again. Seth. Uh, how's it going again, guys? All right, man. Uh, I'd like to know uh, what's the deal now with Brian Pillman. I haven't heard anything on it in a while. Brian Pillman, uh, what, what happened was his ankle did not heal right, and they actually had to go back in and re and break the ankle again and reset it, and he's still re you know recovering. But he's he's still in his contract with the WWF. Oh yes, and he will be. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that, that, that's the deal on Pillman. All right, thanks, guys. All right, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's a name that hasn't been brought up in a while. I mean, you know, since ever since the uh, you know, incident at Brian Pillman's house with St Stone Cold and all that really uh, sent a lot of people nuts about, you know, the gun that he was using. So, I mean, I, I, I think they wanted Pillman to lay low a little after that also. Well, I mean, we're talking about 1996, and we're talking about a time in which ECW became more, they're still underground, uh, they're still not at the same level of the WWF and WCW, but they're more mainstream. They're more known. One of the parts of this year that I'll take, and I'll remember more than any others, is when we were sitting there last Thursday at the National Guard Armory in Gastonia. 300 people in that facility to see an outstanding main event between the Barbarian and Rob Van Dam. Van Dam does his famous somersault out of the ring and takes Barbarian down. 150 people, a lot of them wearing ECW t-shirts, were doing the same chant that you hear all this time at the ECW arena. ECW, ECW, ECW. And then the other half of the crowd looked at them like they were nuts because, I said this before, there's a lot of people in the South who still don't know ECW from ESPN. But last year there wouldn't have been 150 people that knew ECW. There would have been five. That gives you an idea that it has made somewhat of a progression into this part of the country. That gets back to the mainstream question. It does. It does. And, and you know, Paul Heyman has done a great job in marketing ECW and making it appealing to the fans. Back to the lines. Timber. What's up, Chris? Timber, man, we're, we're so uh, glad to have you, man. You really went over last uh, last Thursday night. What a great, great match you had with Young Blood. Man, I work like that every time I go in the ring, bud. Well, man, you know, like we're we were honored to see you because, like, you know, you when you called in, a lot of people didn't know, uh, you know, actually had never seen you wrestle around here before. And and you know, when you were talking about some of the moves you do, and the moonsault was just incredible. And you know, people have been talking about it. A guy your size doing that kind of off the top row uh, moves, it's special. How many people do you think were there that night? Uh, we were upwards in our count of around 300 people, and basically, since this was one of the first times or the first time you wrestled in this area of North Carolina, you know, those are 300 new people that got an opportunity to see what Timber the Lumberjack can do. The question we have for you is, number one, uh, after our Thursday night show, you wrestled the next night in Fayetteville, and we wanted to find out a little bit about that, and also we want the fans who listen to this radio program to have the chance to find out about any more bookings you might have in the near future. Well, we're working on coming back to Gastonia since we had such a good house last time. You know, I'd rather work for those 300 people than 2,000. Those 300 there were just bloodthirsty. They were hungry. They were wanting some hard-hitting action, and I feel that we gave it to them that night. Now, granted, Sabu was a no-show. But there's some things that are out of our control, but I think we did okay by, you know, filling him in with the Barbarian. Um, barbarian was definitely. an Italian match. I mean, people found out about that, and they were a little bit disappointed to start. And then they saw a match that, you know, other than those 300 people, nobody's going to get a chance to see ever, probably. I'll tell you what, I thought it was an excellent night. Myself, 
I'd kill Doink off. You know what I'm saying? Man. <laughs> Doink's got to go. This PCW is no place for a circus freak. You know, we want to go in there. Good point. And knock people out with the chairs and bust a couple of heads open and give those bloodthirsty people down there what they want. And that's good, hard, solid action. You know, the thing that was great about the card, you know, I almost called it Southern Extreme because it had an extreme feeling to it. It had an extreme attitude to it. And, hey, it was in the South. And remember, and everybody needs to know this, and I know you know this too, Timber, the extreme wrestling did not start in South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It did not start in Middletown, New York. It did not start at the Jim Thorpe or wherever else ECW wrestled. It started right down here in the Carolinas, in Georgia, uh, in Alabama, in Florida, That's where it began. What ECW does is what Mid-Atlantic and a lot of other groups in the South did a long, long, long time ago. Right, right. Well, Tim, let me ask you something. You know, this ongoing feud with you and Youngblood, when you come back, uh, are are you and him going to have another grudge match, or or are are you going after new meat? No, I think I pretty much shut him up. I I would say. Yeah, that that suplex on the floor... (laughs) Really did something for me. I mean, I was over at the uh, uh, the table, and me, me and Josh and the two dogs, the guy was running sound. We we were almost at ringside running just to see. Hey, it did something for me too. <laughs> 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 oh man, uh, did did I do you all right when I yelled timber? I mean, because you know you're that coming. That was fine. That was fine. I've been places where they go, you know, entering the ring, timber to lumberjack. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> You, you got to throw something in there, you know, when you start yelling my name, it gets people going, the chainsaw music, you know, everything, it all adds up. It's true, it's true. You know, I, it's funny because some people just don't make that effort, and they did this, and, you know, I think Chris did an outstanding job as far as ring announcing, and, hey, you brought it home. And the people, Gaston County, they look forward to seeing you again. Right now we have to go to break, but Timber... It was awesome, and it was awesome talking to you again. And people in Gaston County, they didn't know you. They know you now. Hey, this is Chris and Josh from the Sports Zone here to tell you about our new show. It's for you professional wrestling fans. It's called Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh. The only wrestling talk show in the area featuring the latest happenings from WCW, the WWF, and independent promotions. We will take your calls at 922-6333 and 922-6334. Uh, Chris, I think I forgot to mention the NWO. I think Holland and Nash are coming after us. Uh, They probably are, Josh. Oh, God, they're here right now. I know where you need to be here every Monday, 5 to 6. God, guys, what's wrong? What, what? You want to mess with me, Chico? Uh, Paul, please please leave. Please, please, security, security. Like I said. Chris, don't let them get me. They have just got Josh, but don't let them get you. Go after Heenan. (laughs) Be here every Monday, 5 to 6, 91.7 FM. Brother, I completely, completely had forgot about that commercial yeah. <laughs> until I went through that oh and through God. these old tapes. Oh, man. <laughs> Go after Heenan. Yeah. A um, couple things, Mike, that I would like to talk about. For one, there was a lot of hate on Hulk Hogan on this particular episode of Through the Road. Yeah. Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> once again, man, Chris Stowe not cutting any corners, not sugarcoating anything. Um, he, he called it. Yep. Hulk Hogan lied, man. Yep. Uh, he did, and uh, this was still very fresh. This had just happened. Oh yeah. When when this episode yeah. was recorded, man, that that stuff was was brand new. So uh, <laughs> he called it out. Um, you know something else I want to talk about, Mike, was Timber the Lumberjack. Yeah. That last call in that we had on Through the Ropes, uh, Timber was a participant in that show yes. that Chris and Josh had promoted just a couple days before. Um, brother, I don't know about you, Mike, but in my opinion, other than the main event of RVD and the Barbarian, Timber, 22 years later, is really the only thing that sticks out in yeah. my mind of that show, yeah. other than that main event. Right. Uh, was it Doink? 
Uh, Doink, I forgot <laughs> Doink was even there. I, I really did really? until I went back and listened to this. Like, I'll be damned, he was there. Yeah. But it wasn't real Doink, was it? It wasn't actual. Oh, oh, yeah. uh, well, is it's there such real, a thing? Yeah. I mean, doink <laughs> is a doink. <laughs> as real as he can be, man. Is a doink is a doink. <laughs> Oh uh, man, I can like I said I can unless it's a dink. Well, now the dink on the other hand, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, Timber was something else. This guy was huge. Um, I don't know, man. I'd say he's probably about three fifty, give or take, maybe. Oh yeah, dude. At, at yeah. least, man. Oh yeah. And he could do a moonsault. Oh man, and, he could do a lot. Of oh, he stuff. could do a lot of stuff, yeah. man. But his main uh, finisher yeah. was the moonsault. Yeah. And you know, nowadays people are like so what a big guy doing a moonsault? Who cares? Back then it was. It was a pretty big deal. It was a real big deal, yeah. Mike. And you know, and being able to see that live, yeah, was, was just something else. It kind of reminded me of Hugh Morris in a way. You know how yeah. Hugh Morris oh, is yeah. the big guy, how he yeah. could do that really beautiful moonsault. Timber was very similar yeah. to that man. You know, they had similar body styles and similar work styles. Mm-hmm. But like I said, that was new. Yeah. That was something you hadn't seen, and a big man moving like that. Oh yeah, it was kind of unheard of, Mike. He also had a big mullet too. Yes, he did, he brother. Did. Um, it, was, it was big time. And man, this is '96. You know, the year of the mullet. It was still, uh, it was still, it was still hanging on. I'm trying to remember if I still had mine at the time. I think no. I think I'd actually no, cut mine about yeah. a year or two before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I ended up dating a real pretty girl, and that was kind of the condition. So yeah. I was like, "See you, mullet." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was time to let get that shit but one thing oh yeah man it was worth it too i don't regret it uh but i tell you something else that i wanted to touch on was something that smiley talks about and how he puts over the extreme style of wrestling originated here in the south yeah and brother yeah, sure did he, he's absolutely right on that i mean you know everybody thinks yeah. that it's ecw that started this oh, oh man Mid-Atlantic, florida, Mid-Atlantic, florida. Uh, memphis. memphis 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 you know huge that was where, you yeah. know, in my opinion, Memphis was really the yeah. hotbed of the extreme style. Yeah. And it did bleed over in the Mid-Atlantic. It yeah. did bleed over into Florida. Georgia. Georgia, absolutely, yep. man. Um, it's one thing that I really, going back and listening to these tapes, you know, Smiley was just so just knowledgeable about this stuff, yeah. man. And he just put it all out there. And, and he made points that I wouldn't have thought about. You know, even today, man, 22 years after this original broadcast, I'm listening to it again. I'm like, hell yeah, he's yeah. right. You know. And speaking of Smiley, brother, um, the the next clip we're going to play, Mike. Hey, you know what I just figured well, out? <laughs> it's a damn clip show. It is a clip show. It's a damn clip it's show. It's absolutely a clip show. Yes. <laughs> it's a, actually, Mike, it's a How clip. How about that? It's actually a clip special. Bro. Hey, it's you a snuck special. that in on me. <laughs> <laughs> kind of got it on the yeah. radar. And, and, uh, but like I say, it's a clip special. You know what's special, even better? So. It's not our clip show. No, it's not. Yeah. Man. Thank God, because that would really kick yeah. my ass, man. Yeah. I, I cannot go back and listen to us, Mike. I All can right. go back yeah. and listen to these guys yeah. Yeah. get these clips together. Um, and speaking of clips, man, the next one we're about to play, Mike, I wanted to end the show with this clip, but it really just didn't flow right, you know, so I actually had to take it out of our show, and I wanted to make it special, man, because Smiley says something in this clip that I think just really defines what Through the Ropes was and what the and what that era of pro wrestling was and what it meant to us. But before we get to the clip, well, let's hear what the man himself has to say. So it, it does me so much honor and so much joy to say here on the podcast, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear from the one and only one half of the World Wrestling Talk Show Champions of the World, the one and only, the man himself, Mr. Smiley, Josh Stewart. Take it away, Josh. Hey everybody, it's Josh Stewart, one of the co-hosts of Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh from back in the day. And I just wanted to thank the Pudmaster himself, Jason Finger, and the Wild Child Mike Payne for asking me to contribute to this special rebroadcast of Through the Ropes on uh, the podcast. I have so many special memories of from back in the day, but I really just want to take this time to thank the people who made it so special. Uh, I got to thank my co-host, my partner in crime, Chris Stowe, uh, who I was involved in so many projects with. Uh, I know at the end of the day, whether I did good or whether I did bad, you were always going to call me a wuss, but I know you meant it with love, and uh, I love you too, man. Uh, I really want to thank Jeff Blackwell, who made this whole rebroadcast possible by unearthing this past past audio and sending it to Jason, kind of getting the ball rolling with this whole thing. Uh, Jeff, that's really kind of apropos. Uh, no matter what 
projects people had going on back in the day and as many things as you were working on, you were always helping other people to make what they were doing better. And uh, you pulled it off again, man. So congratulations. Uh, I got to thank Chris Baker, who not only helped us out uh, with answering calls on Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh, but also did updates and uh, answered calls on the sports zone with Chris and Josh. Uh, Chris, congratulations on your broadcasting career taking off. And uh, it's not a surprise that it took off after you got away from me and Chris, but um, just happy to see good things going on in your life. Um, I really got to thank Two Dogs. Um, There really are no words to describe Two Dogs other than... I will say that we're still going to be having the Upper Deck Bar and Bistro argument in 20 years, and uh, I'll be looking forward to it. Um, The last thing I really want to say is I'm really inspired by what everybody's working on uh, down there. Um, I know that Jason and uh, Mike have their podcast. I know that Two Dogs has his podcast, and... um, I haven't really had a chance to work in pro wrestling as much as I wanted to as far as writing in the last couple of years. I've had a chance to do a lot of things since I moved up to New York, write for several publications, and I got a chance to uh, have lunch with Rowdy Roddy Piper and interview him the year before he died and covered a WrestleMania. And um, I've I've kind of been away from that for a while, but uh, this project and this rebroadcast has really kind of opened my eyes to... Uh, trying to get back involved as much as I can in the new year. Uh, So um, I really want to thank everybody for the um, good feelings about the past, but also for the uh, motivation to look for the future and what projects I can get myself involved in uh, moving forward. Um, That's about it. Everybody have a happy holiday and pug life forever. What made 96 better for professional wrestling? The fans. Because, yes, there was a resurgence. The resurgence happened because the fans started coming back to the arena. They started coming back to the house shows. They started coming back to the independent shows. Uh, You know, when the Nielsen called and asked about the ratings, they said, hey, my family is watching professional wrestling, as opposed to Seinfeld, as opposed to Friends. You know, uh, you know, as opposed to the sitcoms that people are usually doing on the weekday nights, they're watching wrestling. That's the resurgence. So you can talk about whatever wrestlers, whatever angles, whatever dollar figures, whatever networks you want. The fans did this. You did this. You made professional wrestling great again. Pat yourself on the back. That's true. And, and you know, re- wrestling, it is great again. And, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And, you know, th- this show is really going and you and, and like you said pat yourself on the back for making wrestling and also pat yourself on the back for making through the ropes such a such a success in such a short period of time you know mike i can't think of too much of a better way to start wrapping this show up than what those guys just said yeah the year was 1996 and wrestling was great again yeah okay. And it was absolutely because of the fans. Yeah, it Pe- was. People like me and you, brother. Yeah. People like Chris and Josh. People like David Hayes, Chris Baker, the E-Man himself. Uh, we are what made wrestling yeah. great. But we also had, I guess, man, we, we had the option to make it great. You know, right. we had good yeah. programming yeah. out there, man. We had good wrestling to choose from. We had choices. All right. We had a choice. And I think that's one thing that maybe we're lacking today. But one thing that Through the Ropes did back in that day was it gave people, you know, uh, uh, more options to get their news. Right. You know, because we couldn't get on the internet, man. Exactly. You know, yeah. Uh, maybe we couldn't get on these mailing lists, you know, for these dirt sheets. You know, Chris and Josh really, man, they really did something special back yeah. then. And they really provided the fans and, and us, you know, all of us, something just special, man. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, Mike, we're about to wrap it up. Uh, we're not. We're going to come back for some final thoughts, but we do have one more segment that we want to play for you guys out there. And uh, basically, this segment is ending the show the way it began, and that's just really putting over that show that Chris and Josh promoted Sorry. in the Gastonia Armory back in uh, 1996 uh, on December the 26th, 1996. And uh, but before we get to that, there's one person that we still haven't heard from, Mike. That's right. 
So, without any further ado, just like it was an honor to introduce Smiley Josh Stewart, it is my pleasure and my honor to introduce to you guys out there listening the other half of the World Wrestling Talk Show World Tag Team Champions. I think I said that all right, Mike. The big guy? The big guy himself, man, the ultimate weapon. So, once again, without any further hesitation, take it away, Chris Stowe. Hey guys, thanks for asking me to come on the podcast here and talk about Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh. Uh, that radio show uh, was very special and to this day still is. Um, that, uh, that, that, that show came along when we were not the first wrestling radio show in the area, uh, but we uh, definitely got to be the most popular uh, there for a while. Uh, just something that took off uh, mainly because the business was just so red hot you couldn't go into a Walmart, couldn't go to a Target or any other retail store uh, without seeing uh, WCW, WWF, WWE, ECW t-shirts. Uh, and it just showed just everybody and their brother at that time watched professional wrestling. So, so Josh and I previously uh, had did a sports radio show. And so both of us were lifelong wrestling fans, and we just wanted to try it one day. And, and honestly, it just clicked. You know, Josh and I... Uh, we come from two different sides of the street. <laughs> when you want to talk about politics or the way we were raised or the way we were act, uh, but both of us uh, love professional wrestling, and we do. We did then, and we do now, uh, and it just clicked. Uh, we, we we came to the show uh, even with two different viewpoints on what good professional wrestling uh, really was, and I think it, it just clicked with the audience. Um, it, it it clicked with our friends. And, you know, one thing about Through the Ropes, it, it got so big uh, at one time. Uh, you know, a quick story. You know, after college, I went on to work for Clear Channel Radio. I spent, you know, 21 years in the radio, in the radio business. And I can remember going to a remote when I was working uh, 96.9 The Cat. And we're out there doing a remote. And a guy walks up to me and says, hey, man, you're Chris from Through the Ropes. And I said, yeah. And he said, can I have your autograph? And... You know, it was one of those things where it, it, it just shocked me. And I said, hey, man, I appreciate it very much. It's nice to see you. And, you know, he's like, I, I used to listen to you and Josh all the time, he said. And, and you know, it, it was one of those things that just it, it it really just shocked you that how big, because at that time, uh, the show had been off the air for a good two years. Uh, it just really just shocked me how big that the show came, that they would want my autograph somebody just did a wrestling radio show so you know that that was special the the show uh, you know after we graduated or whatever down the road you know it turned into we had a newsletter an email newsletter that josh uh, and i worked very hard on and even later that i kind of started uh, a through the ropes hotline uh, that got so popular people would call this number that the voicemail company that that i was was i guess renting or a monthly space it actually shut their whole company down because the bandwidth that people were calling this line. So, you know, Through the Rose is extremely special. Um, you know, it's it's something that I miss. Um, another thing I want to mention, I was talking about the hotline, the newsletter. Through the Ropes was an avenue for me to enter the world of professional wrestling as well. Um, we were doing a remote at the Fish Camp Jam in Gastonia, and I actually was introduced and met somebody I'd watched throughout my childhood, which is Jimmy Boogie Woogie Man Valiant. Most of you guys uh, would know him from the Mid-Atlantic days. And so, uh, you know, I, I was introduced to him. I was introduced to some promoters. I went by a show. Um, and, you know, I was in the pro, pro wrestling business for a while. In fact, uh, you know, later on, on after that, you know, Mikey and Jason and Josh and myself, uh, and, you know, we, we were all in the wrestling business. So, uh, through the ropes started that for me. Um, through the ropes started that for a lot of us, uh, you know, just because it was our first uh, in, in introduction to the world of professional wrestling through radio. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, me and Josh actually did the show, but Chris Baker uh, and Crystal and Two Dogs and Jason and so many people would do promos for us and they and 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 jeff blackwell you man man he did the, one of the best freaking intros that i've ever heard and he did it 
all on a on a computer and and, and different things that, that that he had gotten uh in in his bedroom so jeff was cool to do that i uh, actually uh, lost touch with jeff for a while just heard from him a few weeks ago he actually had an old version of through uh, through the ropes and i appreciate all the work that he did uh, you know it's you know life goes on you know i'm in another business now i uh, still you know stay in touch with jason every chance i get uh, but I, I'd love to, you know, get up with a lot of the guys. But you know, I, you know, and, and I gave Josh a hard time. Uh, like I said, me and Josh are from uh, two different worlds. But Josh worked his butt off on this show. Josh worked his butt off on the uh, newsletter, um, and you know, just just a hardworking guy. Uh, one thing we even promoted. I think one of the the episodes was coming off. Uh, the matter of respect to show that we actually promoted so one thing about professional wrestling uh, it'll smarten you up it'll spit you out and if you're not tough you can't take it so i uh, lasted a long time uh, i love pro wrestling uh, and once again guys i appreciate it through the ropes meant a lot to me i think you can tell uh that it does and 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 you know it's just something that who knows down the road uh you know the the sky's the limit you know with podcasting and different things uh, you know, we, we, we could start something again, but really and truthfully, I'm just uh, extremely happy uh, with what we did, the, the little mark that we made, and continued success uh, on the podcast. You guys are doing a good job, and thanks for having me on. When we watch ECW Wrestling... Uh, I think we're going to focus a little more in the future on Van Dam because I believe he became my favorite ECW wrestler right on Thursday quick. night. Man, he very quickly on, he put on a show, and this guy was late. He actually got a speeding ticket on his way to the arena. He was trying to get there that bad, and you know, the guy finally did. He put on a great, great show, and Van Dam's a great wrestler. And you know, really, when th that match between the Barbarian and Rob Van Dam, myself, I didn't even miss Sabu. A lot of people did. Uh, you know, I saw some guy, guy there dressed like Sabu, and I'm sure he went home uh, feeling like you know he didn't see his idol, but you saw two guys giving everything they had Thursday night. And a quick note on Van Dam: great in the ring, but also great outside the ring. Stayed for tons of pictures, was nice to everybody, and that's something that we really appreciated. Every wrestler who was at the card incredibly accommodating to the fans, and that's the atmosphere we always try to create. That is, and we're out of time for this particular edition of Through the Ropes with Chris and Josh. Don't forget the Through the Ropes um, net newsletter. Excuse me, you can get a free subscription, RebelJ2 at AOL.com, and also the Through the Ropes hotline, updated each and every day, 521-1115. Also, the upcoming multimedia Through the Ropes webpage. Go to search engine, search engine Alta Vista and type in Through the Ropes. We'll be back next week. Have a great week. Well, Mikey, brother. Man. That's <laughs> it. That's it the hell is alta vista <laughs> for real man i forgot about that dude i was so out of touch i really didn't know what it was <laughs> and i still really kind of i was like oh my god i haven't heard that in like two decades i but just yeah. i just wonder if that rebel j2 email is too active ah. <laughs> what my, about the hotline hey brother <laughs> <laughs> don't call the hotline don't don't or, or those 922 numbers yeah. <laughs> please remember yeah. this is a 22 year old recording right right but you know mike i gotta say brother this one man i, I understand now why they call things like this specials yeah because this was special yeah you know mike when i first heard these <clears throat> these uh old recordings the first thought i have is like people need to hear this yeah you know because now podcasts have become such a big thing you know we're obviously doing ours you know we have other friends doing them as well yeah. and i'm like man you know we're all in here listening to these podcasts but this this is what it was all about man this was special this is what yeah. what everything we've done man came from and i'm not talking just the podcast mike i'm talking about the wrestling shows the millennium wrestling federation oh, no. i mean I, it, it it was the rock that that dropped in the pond that that just rippled out to everything everything man if it was not for through the ropes with yeah. chris and josh that there you know we wouldn't have had our brawl game show last week all right you know man we would have never been in the ring you know i mean i really believe that mike you know and like i said man this just, and on a personal note 
this project has really been very special to me like i said on a personal level man because uh you know i'm still learning here brother i'm still learning how to be be a producer i'm still learning how to use the software i have at home i'm still learning how to use the hardware you know i'm still i'm still learning and this project to say was a learning experience would be put in very very mildly brother i learned a lot Uh, i learned a lot about patience i learned about aggravation (laughs) but i've also learned what it means to have something come to an end that i'm very happy with yeah and i'm very proud of this thing mike and uh you know i just want to say a couple more things before we uh before we go ahead and shut it down and that's thank you to you you know for being my partner man yeah. for uh helping this podcast be what it is i mean man this has been one of the greatest most fun ventures i've had well since our wrestling days you know it's oh it's absolutely you know? <laughs> and, uh, this, it has it has man and i, I gotta say thank you i couldn't do it you know i couldn't do it without you i don't, I don't know if we could do it without the the puds well, worth. Puts worth man well, i'm pretty sure we could do it without puds yeah we might yeah yeah it. we could do it without yeah. puts worth. but, but, but it wouldn't be as fun man. but exactly yeah. man <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and as far as this project goes, I know we, we brought this man's name up several times and we've given him a lot of love today, and I still don't think it's enough. No. And, and as to Jeff Blackwell, the E-Man, um, thank you, E-Man, for finding these tapes and making them available, yeah, brother. Dude. Um, what, what a what a find. Oh, what man. A, I mean, it's like the Lost Ark, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's like any other. I don't know if it's quite the Lost Ark, but, oh, but it is a definitely... <laughs> An architectural treasure. Absolutely, you man. Know, that is definitely a find. Oh, that to is, me, you, this, you know, is grail. Yeah. this is the grail. This is the grail. This is a gun face, if you look right at it. <laughs> well, there's a couple of these clips, man. You know what I'm saying? Of, you know, yeah. They might melt your ears, brother, yeah, because yeah. That, it's that exactly. hot. Exactly. It's that hot, yeah. man. Uh, but, you know, I want to give another extra special shout-out, man, to Josh Stewart, to Smiley. Yeah. Uh, Smiley has been has really worked with me on this project a lot. You know, because when we found the, the original audio recordings, you know, I was like, well, let's just do a, a straight-up rebroadcast. Right. You know, let's just play the whole thing in its entirety. And, you know, there was some question, can we do that? You right. Know? I still think, you know, I don't even know if we're supposed to be doing what we're doing. <laughs> you know, but hey, fuck hey. It, man, we're going to do it anyway. <laughs> till, um, till somebody tells us we can't. Yeah, exactly, man. And you, then we'll still put and up then a we're, bitch we'll about it. And then we'll still do it anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah. We're going to do it anyway, but yeah. oh man, Smiley was right there at the very beginning. You know, he helped me with the clips. He helped me, you know, figure out what would work the best for the show. And like I said, man, this would not have happened today if it was not for Smiley. Right. So I want to say thank you, Smiley, for for being there, for helping out. Uh, you know, same thing with Stowe. You know, yeah. uh, Baker. All, all you guys, two dogs. Thank you guys for being a part of this. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys for doing it, man. Hey, thank y'all for for being the rock. You the, know that that dropped into the pond that rippled out the, for everybody. Yes, man, for everybody, yeah. brother. And that's the thing. But one last thing I'm gonna say before we sign off, Mike, is both Josh and Stowe in these memories teased, possibly, maybe hey. trying to figure out a way to bring this thing back. Y'all can't do that shit to me because when I heard Chris Stowe say the sky's the limit, and I'm like. <laughs> now yeah, what man. I want what I want for Christmas hey. is I want a new episode Let's of Three get the it back. That's what I want, man. Let's get it back. Podcast 2019. It can it can happen, bro. That's right. There's Skype. There's no I don't we don't fuck with Skype. <laughs> But you know, you guys, you guys. Yeah, yeah, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. No, I'm yet. holding on, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm holding on. But no, nah, man, uh, this has been fun. I hope everybody out there is having a merry Christmas. Hope everybody's having a great holiday. And uh, Mike, brother, anything you like to say before we head it on out, man? Hey, man, happy holidays to everybody, and uh, thank y'all, thank yes. y'all, and hopefully, you know, this this is just a little gift from us. Uh, and hopefully some of the old schoolers that are looking for, you know, like through the ropes, you know, uh, online. Here it is. Here it is. Here, it is here's a, one. It's a taste, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mike, as far as I'm concerned, the puds, you know, we're going to be doing this for years and years. I got yeah. two more episodes. All right. And I got some outtakes, man. You know, that's another reason I want to condense these things, right. maybe uh, to try to stretch them out. But uh, hopefully you haven't heard the last of Through the Ropes, whether that's retro or new school. Exactly. Hopefully this is the last time. But once again, all you guys out there, Merry Christmas. Thank you for uh, making the podcast. It is what it is. And uh, spread the word, man. You know, let people know. Definitely spread the word on this one. If you don't want to help the puzzle, out, cool, whatever. But let people know about Chris and Josh through the ropes, man. That's this right. thing is too special. You got to put it out there, man. Let them know about it. All right, Puzzworth, anything you got to say, brother? Happy holidays. All right. That's Stay right. Warm. Stay warm. Happy, Happy holidays. Holiday. Yeah. Exactly. And brother, I can't think of any better way to end this thing. 
Once again, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you puds here soon. WSGE Dallas 91.7 FM ends another broadcast day. WSGE is licensed to the Board of Trustees of Gaston College as authorized by the Federal Communications Commission on an assigned frequency of 91.7 megahertz with an effective radiated power of 3,000 watts. WSGE would like to thank you for your support day after day and invite you to listen in again tomorrow for the best variety in music, news, programming, and more on WSGE Eagle 92 FM.